Okay, good. No. Louie, I'm not letting you back out just so you can scream at people. They deserve to enjoy their backyard too. Okay. Well, now that you got to see a uh, streamception. For ruining your entire day, it's also the sound a clock makes. That's right, boys and girls, I'm not just a pretty face here to tell jokes, I'm also here for the education. Now, while TikTok does happen to be the sound a clock makes, it, uh, it's mostly the first thing, because once again, I am here with TikTok recipes for you that are just, uh, they're not good, okay? Now, normally, we'd just be going through one single TikTok account, going through that recipes, seeing just how bad it can get, but today, we're changing it all up. We're gonna be looking at more multiple accounts, hoping that it can multiply the badness. Did, so did they just put the leaves in a blender? TikTok, I have curated a collection of only the finest bad recipes. Before we begin, I would recommend that you put away any sort of food or drink, really anything that is dependent on you having an appetite, because uh, it's about to get yucky. Okay, let's begin. So you may have heard of a beef wellington, maybe even a beef wellington, but have you ever heard of a leaf wellington? Start by gathering some leaves, throw them in a blender, and then grinding them up. Yeah, no, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. That is without a doubt one of the worst. Like, really? things I've ever seen in my entire life, even if this video is kind of a joke, which I think it is, a leaf wellington. I think even joking about such a thing is- Can you imagine just cleaning the blender after that? You put it in a bowl and mix in some water and some flour until you get a sloppy leaf mess like this. Put your leaf slop into a loaf pan to make a leaf loaf. Bake at 375 degrees until golden brown like this. Can you imagine what your kitchen would smell like during the creation of this monstrosity? Now leaves don't it's supposed necessarily... To, it's supposed to be the beef part of the beef wellington. That's why it's called a leaf wellington. They're literally... If he eats this... F6. Smell bad, but it's definitely not what I want my entire house to smell like. I've never cooked a leaf, but I can't imagine it's going to make that very distinct smell any. Lots of fiber. Better. And then you'll also want to cook up some mushroom duck cell. Then you want to use some moldy corn leaves as the prosciutto. Smush on your mushroom duck cell. And then smear on some Chick fil A sauce onto your leaf loaf. Well, I mean, it deserves the dirt, step, but yeah. Somehow makes it worse. The ability to take something like a leaf loaf and continue well, to that's where it comes out. make it even more disgusting is a genuinely impressive ability. And roll it up just like a beef wellington and then put it inside some puff pastry. What you gotta roll Why are you up, wasting the puff pastry? Oh! Stop! No! The puff pastry! Cut a perfect portion. Oh! Wellington, add some maple syrup and a sage leaf. And there you have the perfect leaf wellington. I've got to say, surprisingly, the impression that this video has left me with is a positive one. If you can take leaves, moldy corn, and Chick-fil-A sauce and turn it into something that actually looks like it would be delicious, you are a talented We're, we're, we're a hate-free uh, household. No, no Chick-fil-A. This brings me near throwing up, so uh, let's move on. I know you've heard of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but have you ever heard of a peanut butter and penny sandwich? What? First thing you want to do is take out your shriveled up G nuts and then throw them into a food processor. If there was ever a sentence that desperately relied on context to not make you sound like an actual psychopath, that's the one. They don't have any fat in them, so in an attempt to make it more buttery, I added some butter and then mix it together. It's raisins and butter. G nut butter. 
To make the pelly, it's super simple. Just boil some water, add some gelatin, and then your peanut butter, whisk it together, and then let it set. In about three hours after your pelly is set, smear some g-nut butter on one piece of bread, and then your pelly on the other. That looks like a texture nightmare. Smoosh both sides of the sandwich together, and then obviously we're cutting it on a diagonal, because diagonal sandwiches taste better, and then you have a g-nut butter and pelly sandwich. Obviously I had to give it a taste, and you know what? It kind of tasted like some rum raisin ice cream with a little bit of peanut butter. Okay, so logic tells me that this should taste pretty much like a normal peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The texture- It also be a textural nightmare. Yes. Also, does this guy oh, really friendly no. friendly to anybody else? During these last few videos, I kept expecting him to start explaining to me what rubber banding is. Like, I know I fucked up my, my stuff yesterday, but damn. Broken. For some reason, the audio so of this video came out it's like it was recorded by holding a flip phone up to a walkie-talkie. Why, I don't know. She did a voiceover, that's why. Oh, who's the fucking Velveeta? Why bother with the Velveeta if you're gonna put all the other friggin' cheeses in there? No, oh, there they are. I knew they were coming. Whenever you see uncooked pasta, Velveeta, and about 18 pounds of butter in the same pan, you know hot dogs are somewhere lurking, just waiting to hop in. This kind of crap's why. Why I have to Velveeta, live on avocados. Hot dogs and the refusal to just boil your pasta. You know the thing wasn't friggin' hot. Let me. Look at this. I'm gonna find it. My god, I think I would rather be this. Watch how she takes the pan out. One of her hands doesn't even have the. She's got that wet friggin' rag. Oh, what a surprise. There's a oh mullet. God, I think I would rather be out fighting fires than eating this. It's like all of my worst fears in one video. A giant slab of Velveeta hot dogs and fear of copyright. I swear if this flip phone ringtone instrumental of Say So gets copyrighted, I'm going <laughs> to lose my mind. Come back, come back and sandwich with me. Please cook it. Clean your damn thing. No, green food kills people, don't... Oh my god. Yeah, that bacon does look a little bit past its time, but I think you're Sucks. fine. If you've been eating from this oven for any extended amount of time, you've probably built up a tolerance to just about anything. <laughs> I love it when I actually call stuff on the breath. Why? That's all. Your bacon should be salty enough. Some ketchup. Ew. Too much hidden sugar. That's not cooked! Not even trying to be funny, this bacon somehow looks less cooked than it did when it originally went in. You don't like your bacon too cooked. I think what you're looking for is just a living pig. This... Oh, no. Yeah? No! I worked in too many jobs with food safety. This is some sort of joke. Like, please. This next video is incredibly sad. This stove has never been used. There's hair on that sandwich. Get the hair out of the damn lunchbox. Put things in packages. But now you're gonna have soggy Lunch. popcorn. Is the hair part of the meal? Is that a fun little surprise once oh. you finish your popcorn? If these videos are not a joke and there's actually a child living in these Please regions, call Child Protective Services. And need to be so I've made watermelon pizza before, but never like this. The difference is you're ruining a perfectly good watermelon. It's gonna have anxiety. And luck was well with barbecue sauce, pineapples, of course. Because I don't mind pineapples as long as there's ham with the pizza, but this and grilled watermelon's a thing. Don't know how I feel about cheese. 
to slice it up and begin. All right, there's um, a lot going on here, and none of it is good. First off, not a big fan of barbecue pizza myself. I feel like it kind of defeats the purpose of a pizza. Then we got pineapple on pizza, which I'm I not know this woman into. by her eyebrows. A war She's a YouTube comment, star. So, uh, let's keep it civil, people. And then the elephant in the room, um, watermelon pizza. Is uh, is pizza dough just not good enough for you? Today we are cooking Probably. Angus beef people trying to steak. find cuts around uh, carbs. We're gonna be doing this in the beautiful outdoors. You're gonna need one of these weird mixing bowls that looks like it opens like a bread machine. You're gonna take your steak. And this is a joke. This has got to be a joke. Please tell me. Like so. And throw it in your weird looking mixing bowl bread machine. Okay, so this is what I uh, sincerely hope is just a really bad joke. But I'm including it anyways because something I've noticed with a lot of these bad TikTok recipes is that while a lot of them are purposefully bad, it doesn't detract from the fact that you are still wasting perfectly good food. As many of you guys already know, I'm pretty against wasting food, especially for social media. What the if you order fuck? food and you don't like it, not a big deal. If you are purposefully oh. making dozens and dozens of recipes just for a few likes and then you throw them away, yeah, that's not a cool thing to do. Yeah, don't do that. I don't care if it's a joke, the waste of food pisses me off. Right. This is the, like I a try not to get angry water. challenge. Let's get the seasonings out of the way. Hopefully they imbued their flavor into this delicious meal <laughs> we prepared. Ooh, well, we have perfectly a nice, good food. juicy, well-cooked oh. beef ribeye. Aha, uh -huh, hilarious. What an amazing TikTok. I am glad that an actual living thing had to die for you to stick its meat inside of a microwave to ruin it for a video that got like eight likes. What a good use of the life of another living thing. Well, guys, another day and another reminder that TikTok uh. seems to breed just some awesome human behavior. If you could travel back in time 200 years ago, or even like 20 years ago, really, and you told somebody okay. that in the TikTok future, Talk recipes, it should be a crime. The next time you have brunch, you should give this a try. I'm making what I call a dog cake. It starts off with a splash of milk in a blender, followed by two hot dogs, cotton candy, mac and cheese. There's only two things guaranteed in this life, boys what? and girls. One of them is death, and the other is the fact that people will always be posting their absolutely horrendous cooking on the internet for the entire world to see. At least that I think that's how the book goes. Today we are revisiting what might just be- No! No. No. I don't care if it's a joke. That's disgusting. And they're doing squeezy cheese. They put the animal's yogurt in there. And it looks like they're doing the Velveeta cheese packet. Make it stop. Make it stop. I almost dropped my glasses. Just make it. A favorite TikTok cooking account, Calibro's Kitchen. Now some of you might Fuck remember Calibros. this guy from a few months ago, but the TikToks we watched like the meat cookie, you know, where he stuffed a chocolate chip cookie full of spam. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff we're going to be dealing with today, so if you have a weak stomach, maybe, maybe, uh, run along. I don't have a weak now, stomach, but damn. The quality of this TikTok account is that everything his blunders is bad on purpose. This guy is like a genuine friend. chef, and he uses his knowledge to make things that are just absolutely terrifying, and you know what? I'm in full support of that. Another thing is that he actually eats the things he creates. He's not just out here wasting food for TikToks, throwing away everything once he's done recording. He actually tries it. He's doing it for food science, which we all know is the most important branch of science. So you know what? It's really Stop fingering your important. yeast. But you guys know me. I'm still going to find a way to. So uh, let's begin. For Chris Kitchen Part 14, I am... Okay, it's Chris Kitchen, and he eats it. Uh, he can punish himself. You wanted new things to watch, and this is the best I could think of. You know, no. for some reason, I think I would actually prefer him just to use cotton candy. Something about making macaroni and cheese with animals is triggering some sort of primal response within me. I cook the shells in boiling water, and I strain them, and then I added the damn. At least he cooks the damn noodles in a pot. Then I added a nice blob of velvety cheese. And then I wang jangled the two until it was a soft sauce. And then I plated it up. 
you don't really want a soupy mac and cheese, and this was very soupy, but so was life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because what I'm worried about when I'm about to eat cotton candy mac and cheese is the soup factor. Yeah, I'm worried about the liquid content of the mac and cheese. Not that I'm about to eat what might just be the worst flavor profile combination ever thought of. Yeah, no, This no, channel no. is a great <laughs> diet. That's where my mind's at. Yeah, then I mixed it a little bit more, and then took a spoonful and tried it. Honestly, it wasn't bad in the first bite. It was cheesy and a little bit sweet. But my lord, that cotton candy flavor kicks you in the back, and oh my god, it's so disgusting. I definitely like the chocolate mac and cheese a lot better. Okay, so, um, first off, did you just say chocolate macaroni and cheese? <laughs> Surely not. No. Talk no, about I something that kill you. That. Let's move on. Well, like I said, it's not bad, and the cotton candy just kind of hits you while he's literally visibly vomiting on camera. Like, yeah, he said the cotton candy is gross, but that's a bit of a further reaction than just kind of gross. So I'm sure you've heard of an everything bagel, but have you ever heard of a burger thing angle? The first thing you what? want to do is give this warm water a little bit of a yeast infection. Wow, that's a choice of words. That's undeniable. <laughs> and since this is a reverse everything bagel, I'm using the everything bagel seasoning to use as flour for the dough. I combined both the everything flour and our yeast infected water until it became a nice dough, then I let it proof for about 40 minutes. The dough was super dense, but it kind of looked promising. I cut the dough in half, I rolled half the dough in my hands, and then I started to form the Bogussi. Okay, Mr. Calibro, we're gonna have to have a talk. On the August the Duck channel, we like to keep our programming child-friendly, okay? So I if don't. We could, if we could cool it on the Bogussi talk, that would be splendid, all right? After forming and stretching the Bogussi... What did I just say? Wow! The we're fucking really hole in the bag. We're him up, aren't we? need, like, a Bogussi jar. I mean, you think you know and respect a man, and then he just starts dropping but Gussie's on the table. Come on, we're better than this. I no, we're not. I put a pot of boiling water for about three minutes, took it out, let it dry off a bit, and then I added some egg wash and some chopped up bagels on top. I then put it in the oven for chopped about up bagels? 15 minutes, and then took it out of the oven. It looks nice golden brown. I cut it in half, added some cream cheese, and then you had I mean, this. Bagel. I mean, it's I a really carb nightmare, but... I into this, but it was very dense and cakey. But it definitely tastes like an everything bagel, but there's no way this is good for you. Well, I mean, it's not like bagels in general are really good for you to begin with. No, it's a big I pile of bread. This is not good for the mouth department, because on top of this being probably the most dense thing a person can eat, there are, like, charred slivers of bagel on top, which will definitely cut every single surface of your mouth. So, uh, have fun with that. So you heard of chicken and waffles, but have you ever heard of Wiccan and chocolates? So you start by adding some chicken, an egg, and a little splash of water, and then blending it up. You know what? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that literally nothing that has ever started in that manner has ever turned out good. <laughs> Meat in a blender is where I draw the line <laughs> in any circumstance. Alright, a nice fruit. Sure. Wanna make a soup a little more soupy? That sounds like a great idea to me. A chicken breast? No boy, no. Hey, props to, props to uh, his milk, blender for being able to do sugar, it. Some vanilla extract, some flour, and some baking powder. And then whisk it all together. And then put your chocolate batter inside a hot waffle iron until it gets nice, fluffy, golden brown. It all looks right. like a regular I'm waffle. You guys, uh, I have never made a waffle that is composed of blended chicken. But if I did, I feel like there would be no real way to know if the chicken was cooked at the correct temperature. Jokes aside about this being gross or not, I'm actually curious if this is actually safe to eat. To make the wicking, I start off with some flour, add some homemade chicken seasoning, as well as some water and egg white, and then I whisk it together, and then I use these little Christmas Santa and snowman molds because they kind of look like chicken shapes, I guess. Well, that is definitely a statement. I've got to be honest, though, just <laughs> speaking from personal experience, I have never seen a piece of chicken and thought, you know what, that looks like a Christmas, Christmas ornament. And I threw it in the microwave to cook. They came out looking like this, and once you batter them with some flour and egg, it kind of just looks like some seasoned chicken pieces. So then I threw them in some hot oil to get a nice crispy golden brown. Then all there's left to do is... To I mean, he obviously knows what he's doing as far as a regular cook. Me that these would not taste very tasty. I mean, it's just egg whites and chicken seasoning. Like, that's, that's not going to make it taste like chicken. I don't know. I, I just don't like this. You start with the chocolate and then dust it with some powdered sugar. And then I added some brown sugar and bourbon whipped butter. 
And then I added that sounds good. our wicking pieces on top, followed by a nice pour of some cayenne maple syrup. And there you have wicking and chaffles. And honestly, I gave this a taste, because you know I had to, but it seriously just tastes like chicken and waffles. There is literally no difference between chicken and waffles and this. Really good, though. I really don't know if I can buy that. I bet the waffle is fine, okay? I mean, you might have to get past the fact that you're eating blended chicken, but hey, no big deal. I've had McDonald's chicken nuggets before, been there, done that. But, like, the chicken flour things, those those just do not seem like they'd be right to me. It's I mean, like big hush puppies, I think. Next time you have brunch, you should give this a try. I'm making what I call a dog cake. Oh yeah, this is when you did the milk and the hot dogs. Followed by two hot dogs and one large egg. Alright, as far as I'm concerned, this is already grounds for a felony. This is not cool and it should certainly not be legal. Just the mentioning of hot dogs in any recipe is already a big red flag. You're tossing those bad boys into a blender. Do you enjoy freedom? Clearly not. You're gonna blend it together. To Looks like a, a nice chocolate shake. And then put it in a mixing bowl and then add some a little bit of milk. Just to thin it out, and then add in your self-rising flour and give it a whisk. If it's What's the point thin, of thinning it out? Milk, and if it's too runny, add some more of the self-rising flour. Then in a hot pan with melted butter, add in your mixture, and then cook it as if they were just normal pancakes. See, he's got actual chef skills. You can ignore the fact that you are cooking a bowling and hot right. dogs mixed with milk, and you can pretend that it's just a normal pancake. You need to be steady though. I got a cookie cutter out just so I can make nice uniform circles so I can stack them together. I want to know what his actual so food is like. Start off with your bottom layer, add some mustard and then pickles, and then add another layer of dog cake, followed by some more mustard and pickles, and keep doing that to the end, and then douse it in He's obviously in Chicago or something like that, they don't have ketchup. Honestly, this is so delicious, it's smoky and sweet. And you get a nice briny from the pickles. I would honestly eat this if it was on a menu. That is information that the FBI and the CIA combined could not get out of me. There is nothing on this planet I would not do before admitting that I enjoyed eating a blended up hot dog. That's never happening. Well, guys, what do you think? If you had to choose a single recipe to eat from this video, which one would it be? Personally, I'm gonna have to go with the Wiccan and Chaffles or whatever he called it. His reaction kind of made me believe that maybe it is kind of good. I might also try like the Beverly thing able, but the other two, uh, no, that's that's never gonna happen. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button. And I know you've heard of an ice cream sandwich before, but have you ever heard of sandwich ice cream? I'm using an Italian hokey and I'm blending it up with a little bit of heavy cream. But again with this guy. My technique was pretty good on this one. But yeah, no, it wasn't that bad. Oh. Sorry, what were the questions? Did I interrupt myself again? What happened? You have triple question marks. Meat cookies? I'm not surprised at anything anymore. I mean, pretty much cookies is a, uh, what, flour, emulsifier, uh, okay. TikTok, and, and heat. that has taught me, if nothing else, that you can get famous for absolutely anything. Basically, if you can put it into some form of media, there's a chance. Now, as we've discussed before on this channel, sometimes Sandwich ice cream. that can be a good thing, and um, others, maybe, maybe not so much a good thing. Now, obviously, this is rather subjective, what is and what isn't worthy of being seen by millions of people, but one thing I hope we can all agree on is that nobody on the planet, no human being, should be subjected to having to watch the recipes by the TikTok account Calibro's Kitchen. And when I say nobody should have to watch them, I actually mean that everybody should have to watch them. Gotcha, didn't I? Now, I don't say that everybody should have to watch them because they're going to make you happy or they're going to be good for your health. I can't wait uh, till my new cookie cutters come. Actually. I say everybody should have to watch they're them because insulting they ones. hold a valuable lesson. Not everything needs to be turned into a recipe. Over the last year or so, we have seen a lot of recipes on TikTok that should have done in the kitchen. The people making the recipe should have had to sign an NDA on the spot, and that recipe should have never made it into the public eye. Sadly, our government is not worried about the real issues, so this hardly ever happens. And then we get viral videos on TikTok teaching I think the point that in look, meat cookies. Like Rice Krispie Hot Dogs. So, the whole thing about this stuff is... I mean, at least he's not wasting it, but... You just like why? Why do this? Oh god. 
I mean, it could be worse. We could be watching Kay's cooking. But the Calibro Skittiness come to the rescue because they are making the most vile recipes ever seen by humanity, and I think it might actually be deterring people from following suit. Now, if you it is wrong. Of my TikTok cooking videos, this is the same guy who made the Leaf Wellington, so uh, we're in for a ride. But before we begin, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. Now, the Ridge Wallet is the big daddy of wallets, or really, I maybe should call it the small daddy because this bad boy is no daddies. Realistic. Are you tired? of carrying around a big bulky wallet like I used to. Oh, don't wait and visit ridge.com slash the duck and show your poor pockets some mercy. Once again, I want to thank Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Let's begin. I know you've heard of an ice cream sandwich before, but have you ever heard of sandwich ice cream? It's only two ingredients, really, ice cream and a sandwich. So Ooh. here's an interesting thing. There are countries out there that have savory ice creams. Like, Honestly, the U.S., uh, it's like U.S., U.K., and a couple of other places just don't. It's all sweet, but most there's a lot of places out there that have savory. All right, we are hardly 10 seconds in, and I'm already ready to gouge my eyes out. Now, before somebody comments this, because I, I know somebody's going to, yes, I'm aware that all of the recipes on this account are purposefully bad. That does not change the fact that I'm, I'm still personally disturbed that they existed at some point. I'm using an Italian hokey, and I'm blending it up with a little bit of heavy cream until it became a nice sandwich slurry. I then mix it with some vanilla ice cream. Hindsight, I I probably should have just used the ice cream to blend it with instead of the heavy cream. But anyway, this had like a weird texture. There were still some meat chunks and cheese chunks. And I threw it in the freezer until it stiffened up a bit. As you can see, I was in the He likes it stiff. Soft. But anyway, I scooped out a little scoop of the ice cream and then I added some extra virgin olive oil and some Italian seasoning to go along with the Italian hoagie. Can you imagine the Italians right now? Can you just imagine them going, What are you doing to our food? Like it's on purpose. And I gave it a taste, and honestly, it doesn't taste that bad. Yeah, there's not a single chance I will ever believe that. But one thing I actually respect about this guy that I never see any of the other bad cooking accounts do is that he actually eats what he creates. You know, he puts an end to what he brings into this world. You know, like a animal mother eating their young. Is that a that too dark for a TikTok cooking video? Yeah. Okay. Noted. Only two ingredients: some baked beans and some chocolate. Start off by making a double boiler and then adding your chocolate. I'm using dark milk chocolate. <laughs> is disgusting. You want to for those that can't see the chat, uh, Mama Ninja says, Husband is sitting on the couch and you said he likes it stiff, and he says out of nowhere, giggity. Get that nice and melty and then start pouring it into a silicone mold. And this is a flan mold. Like this, so it gets on all sides. I did this for about three layers of chocolate, and as you can see, the silicone mold peels away from the chocolate easily. So now it's bean time, I'm going to fill her up with a couple scoops of beans, and then I'm going to add a nice layer of chocolate on top to see This all. technically yeah, could work because there's brown sugar right usually there. in baked so beans. You this the cursed kitchen, and really that's, that's just taking me a bit too far, man. I thought you were just kind of doing this as a joke. But this is just kind of offensive. I mean, this is just a normal dessert in Britain, and you're going to call it cursed? That's just not cool. And then that goes back in the freezer to chill, and then after about 30 minutes or so, you and get, get more nice peanut out. butter cup. I went ahead and took a nice It's not a peanut butter out. cup if there's no peanut, peanut butter in it. It's a bit too thick because everything just gushed everywhere. I'll tell you what, I think my technique was pretty good on this one. But yeah, no, it wasn't that bad. Definitely wasn't the worst thing I've tried. I'm starting to become convinced this guy just has no taste buds. Another thing I like about this guy is that he's a genuinely good cook. Like, I've watched my fair share of the Great British Baking Show, so I know a good chocolate shell when I see one, and that one's pretty nice. I'm going to show you how I make my childhood favorite cereal, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Oops, all shrimp tails. Start by rinsing off your shrimp Wait, and then detaching the tail from the shrimp body. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'll be like the cat that goes, no, 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 no. Just, no. Then mix together some cinnamon and sugar to make cinnamon sugar. And then you want to bread your shrimp tails first in some flour and then into some egg and then back into some flour so they look all nice and coated like that. I've literally almost started crying. I was beginning to forget about this whole fiasco. You brought it right back to the front of my mind. I'm a pretty big fan of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I haven't had it in forever, but the next wow. time I do, I bet you'll be thinking of this. By the way, if you have no idea what this video is referring to, like early 2021, this guy found like six fried shrimp tails in his Cinnamon Toast Crunch. So uh, the next 
time you go to the grocery store and you're thinking that the cereal prices are a bit too high, just know that you might get some complimentary seafood. And it's some hot Which is dangerous because of all the seafood allergies. Brown like this. And then just drop them in a bowl, sprinkle on some of your cinnamon sugar, give them a little tossy toss, then pour some milk into a bowl, and then add in your shrimp tails into the milk. Then you have my favorite cinnamon toast crunch, oops, all shrimp tails. I genuinely have not progressed past this point yet. If this guy actually eats this, we need to get like a case study going ASAP. I fish one out. What did you say? He has COVID. And you know what? I can't it taste honestly anything. just tastes like cinnamon toast crunch. It's just the cinnamon and sugar, a little bit crunchy. Some of the shell doesn't like crisp up all the way and get stuck in your teeth, but like, it's okay. Alright, so I'm not entirely sure where this guy is located, but whoever is the head of government in the country that this guy lives in, y'all need to keep an eye on this guy. Anybody who can eat a cinnamon toast crunch deep fried shrimp tail in milk cannot be safe to be allowed around the public if this man is like a real life super villain. I'm sure you've heard of chicken nuggets, but have you ever had a nick and chug it? If you've been following me for some time, you know that this is an inside-out chicken nugget. I'm using some panko breadcrumbs, some rendered chicken fat, an egg, salt, pepper, So he's gonna, pepper, gonna do the breading as the filling and, and cream, cover and it in chicken? Together. And then I put it on some plastic wrap and rolled it up into a little nick and chug it log, and then threw it in the freezer to chill for about 30 minutes. He's- No, 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 no. He's got fucking Wagyu in his freezer. Give me one second. Into a little nick and chug it log and it threw it in the freezer. This is Wagyu. You can't tell me otherwise. It's it's friggin' A5 Wagyu. He's putting this monstrosity next to it. Hold on a second, I can catch a Pokemon. So boy got some money. He started to chill for about 30 minutes. After about 30 minutes, it's set up, so then I cut it into little chicken nugget shapes. Alright, so, so far, this, this should be the best one, right? It's not combining anything too offensive, I mean, it's just flipping a chicken nugget inside out, so this should, this should be fine, right? I don't know. For the outer part of the nick and chug it, I'm blending together an egg, heavy cream, and a chicken breast. You get a chicken breast slurry like this, and I add some flour, some seasonings, and some baking powder. Whisk it together with some heavy cream, and then dip your nick and chuck in there, and then fry it until golden brown. And then you have some golden but it worked. nick and chuck -its. Just like everything I make on my TikTok, I obviously have to give this a try. And What's honestly, the sauce? it's not that bad. It kind of tastes like normal chicken nuggets a bit. A little bit more fried flavor, but like, I would eat a whole plate of this if I was drunk. Alright, I, I kind of want to retract my previous statement. I don't know what it is about this, but it, it's making me feel gross. Something about biting into meat and then having the crunchy on the inside, I don't like it. I don't know what it is. I guess it just doesn't fit into my idea of what food should be. I thought this would be fine, but I, I don't think it is. So I know summer's almost here and you're trying to eat healthy, we should take this as a sign to finally make those chocolate chips the bookies you've always been wanting to make. It all starts with your favorite world. Well, there's your meat cookies, Mama Ninja. Called spam. All you have to do is slide it out of the can and cut your pieces small enough to be able to put it. I haven't eaten spam since I was nine years old. Okay, I just I can't. In the middle of cookies, it's very important to. Oh, except for when I had the masubi. Most of the fat out, so you don't get very oily cookies. Oh yeah, that's what I'm worried about when I'm making spam cookies. I'm. It's. <clears throat> you take ham, add extra salt, add, add extra nitrates, blend it, and put it basically in that container, and, and, yeah. Worry about the oil content, not the, you know, meat content in my cookie. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> and then you have to make your cookie dough. I'm using a very cheap Benny Crocker cookie dough. Yes, that $1.30 uh, cookie, cookie dough. dough. Smush it in my hand and then place it on the cookie tray and then put a piece of spam on top of that and then some more cookie dough on top of that. Then I bake them in the oven and then they spread out a lot so I use a ring mold to make some uniform cookie shapes. And there you have some gorgeous chocolate chips. Smoking. I mean, it's probably just going to be sweet and salty, but it's, it's still the idea. Nice pink little meaty center. Um, guys, 
Because I'm a bit torn here. On one hand, this is absolutely disgusting, and it should be punishable by life in prison. On the other hand, however, those chocolate chip cookies, you know, ignoring the meat, look rather insane. I'm not normally a big cookie guy, but when it comes to a good, gooey chocolate chip cookie, there's nothing better. So sadly, I must admit, I think I would actually try this against my better judgment. Well, what do you guys think? If you had to try a single recipe from this video, which one would it be? I think I'd probably the chicken nuggets for me would be the chicken nugget thing, even though it still kind of grosses me out. The other ones, there's there's just no redeeming. You couldn't pay me to try sandwich ice cream. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button. I love you, August. So this is a uh, TikTok recipes that will actually kill you. Oh, TikTok, the only app that I trust these days to bring me the highest quality of recipes. Forget the Food Network, forget cookbooks, because if you really want to expand your cooking horizons, TikTok is the only way to go, because, uh, well, if it exists, there's a good chance that somebody on TikTok has cooked it. Now, we've seen quite a few monstrosities on this channel. Don't Everything go use your teeth to open up raw chicken. Oh my god, these people. My soul. See, I'm I'm in the south of the U.S. and and there's soul food, and this is this is the soul has left food. This it hurts. Yeah, from the infamous Leaf Wellington to that one lady who made oh, a milkshake. Oh God! Stop, stop touching it. Have one thing in common, and that is that nobody who is of a sound mind would go anywhere oh, God, here. Didn't Salmonella everywhere. I don't know if I can watch this. This hurts. Food safety. She's touched the can, which means after she's messed with the chick, he or she messes with the chicken. Just everything you touch is going to be. any of these creations? So, like, yeah, they're bad, but they're kind of supposed to be. But today, we've got something special. A competitor to the likes Who can't of spell. Keys Cooking and Jack Scalfani. Oh, cooking. no. I don't know exactly what I've titled this What are you doing? You just deep fry with olive oil. Oh, my God. No. Something along Stop the it. lines of how the cooking in this video can make you dead. And guys, I'm really not joking, okay? There are some cooking practices employed in these TikToks that are not just bad, but genuinely dangerous. And you're about to see that firsthand. And before we begin, I want to kind of apologize. Make it appreciate it, like this much oil. Strained. I somehow managed to lose my voice. So by the end of this video, the croakiness will be at level Stop five using your teeth to open the damn way. packages. Are you not allowed to use knives? I can understand why. Oh my. God. Making big sacrifices for you guys, okay? Let's begin. Stop touching it. Don't touch it. Don't use your teeth to open the damn packages of raw meat. Oh my God. Just shove potatoes up its ass. That's fine. Oh my God. Okay. Um, that's that's quite a few potatoes for a for a chicken that small. Also, I mean, you don't really want to pet a chicken and then grab other things. You know, normally you should try to keep your hands pretty clean when dealing with raw chicken. But surely that's going to be the only occurrence of that, right? Oh, now she has something sharp. What are you doing? Ow! Ow! What are you doing? Are you shoving? Stop shoving things up the poor chicken. <laughs> oh! God, no! No, 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 no! God, what, what, what did you just eat? You've been slapping around a raw chicken and you just broke apart a frozen pork chop with your bare hands and then you eat something? What What would even be edible at this point? I was about to pause the video and comment on the stuffing of a pork chop into a chicken, but oh my god. Comparatively, that doesn't even seem like that bad of a thing to do now. Stop touching things! Stop! Is she not getting any COVID? Jesus! You still alive? 
right, so I've looked through this TikTok account again, and I'm starting to think that this might be an elaborate joke. And I mean, it's one thing if you just don't understand food safety, but doing this as a joke might even be worse. Knowingly putting yourself at risk of getting salmonella for a TikTok? Seriously? I mean, the cross-contamination at play here is unreal. This, I don't care if it's a joke. Do not touch anything after you touch chicken. You wash your hands. There's nothing coming out of that one. Sure, go ahead and touch the spices to the chicken. I mean, if you're going for the speed run world record of getting salmonella, maybe that's a good strategy. Otherwise, um, for everyone, it hurts. Home, I would probably caution against it. Put it in the oven. Please, I know it's just her, her counter, I the, the oven door knob. Looks like this couch is like on its end or it's upside down. What is going on in this kitchen? I just to make a healthy one today because everyone is someone healthy. So I'm going to have eggs and... Yeah, this is healthy. Did I, did I actually just see a person that don't like four gallons of oil to cook some bacon? At that point, I think you're eating like bacon soup. I don't know if you can really just consider this bacon anymore. The primary ingredient is no longer bacon. Right, Their bacon looks weird. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> Please stop. You can't fry things with olive oil. <laughs> Were you learning from Jamie Oliver? I'm gonna turn into fucking Uncle Roger at this point. Especially considering that the oil did not even warm up. I mean, nothing that comes out of this is going to be good. This is frozen bacon sitting in a pool of lukewarm oil. I'm having a healthy one with bacon and fried toast today. Yeah, that's healthy. Oh. I'm not having a takeaway because I always get mine out. I'll let you know. I'm not eating anymore. Today. Is this the same bacon multiple days later or something? The pan hasn't been able to heat up enough to actually do anything to this amount of oil? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but I am a bit concerned about that, uh, that middle piece of bacon there. That does not look edible. I'm having a bit of a healthy one today. So you're opening pasta, it's not healthy. I'm starting to think this might actually just be a joke. I mean, this is a somewhat normal amount of oil. I mean, it's still more than I would use, but it's absolutely nothing compared to And that's prosciutto, you saw. don't... Surely this is just a joke, right? Some hot dogs. Why are you hot dogs in a can? I don't think I've ever seen canned hot dogs before. <laughs> sure, I've seen, like, the little Vienna sausages, but nothing, nothing of this sheer I don't mind Vienna sausages as a snack, no just the, all the animals at my house chase me for it. Oh, I can't see anything I knew hot dogs. Yeah, I'm not really worried about whether or not this is healthy or not. That's not my concern. My concern is that this is now the second time I've seen somebody make this dish. Now, granted, the first time I saw it was being made by Case Cooking, but is this actually <laughs> something that you will eat? I mean, bacon, cheese, hot dogs, and a sauceless pasta? That cannot taste good. Hi, everyone. I'm making a steak dinner today. Again with the teeth. Stop. Do you, you had scissors. What happened to them? I think it's just so outside. The women all changed and all that. Did my cooking videos ever look this bad? I 
don't buy this. Nobody is going to blow their nose midway through their cooking video and then continue to handle their steak. This has got to be a joke. Please tell me it's a joke. Please? Oh my god. So not only are we touching the microwave with our steak hand, the we're just gonna put it on the plate. Steak straight on the microwave plate. This kitchen needs Didn't to wash your plate. mushrooms. It, it, Looks like they might be pre washed, hopefully. Five minutes. Let's whack some cheese on so it melts. So let's crush out the oven. Maybe I mean, you sound. But why do you have American cheese? Don't, don't eat. Why is it crunchy? Nice. Um, there was a good 30 seconds after I watched this that I was actually at a loss for words. Joke or not, this might be one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. The cheese was not even melted. I mean, the cheese didn't even bug. I'm wondering if the oven was even on. So I'm assuming that this is just a five minute microwave steak. I mean, I, I really don't even know Well, if it was, the cheese would have melted. I'm actually getting nauseous. Related to cooking in my life. Well, guys, um, I, I think I need a moment to just, to just reflect on life. Forget about what I've seen today. Go smell the roses, take a walk outside, and just try and find that spark inside again. Oh, no. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do They've got another one. Let's see if they can make me throw up. Oh, my sweet summer child, you still have so much to learn. Never no stranger to bad TikTok cooking on this channel. Matter of fact, we are quite literally the opposite. If there's a bad chef on Why? TikTok, then you can bet your sweet bibby that I know about him. And today, we are revisiting okay. one of the worst offenders we have ever seen on this channel. It's a TikTok account I'm sure many of you remember, My Jane Brain. And I revisited Jane's account a few days ago to see if she was still up to no good, and, uh, well, this Why? Why? Now, if you haven't seen the video that I did about Jane, oh, you she can ago, cut. Well, then, my friend, you are in for a treat. And I mean that with literally no sincerity because this video is likely going to ruin your day. Because we're about to watch a few of Jane's most recent creations, and uh, they're really, really not pleasant, okay? I'd recommend that you put any food products that you might be interacting with to the side, and I suggest that you remove small children from Why are you salting the water? Let's begin. Wow, okay, not even five seconds in and I'm already ready to turn off my computer. Not even gonna give us an introduction, not even gonna tell us what we're making, we're just making a meat man, no context. A meat man infused with eggs, you can't just do that, you can't just drop that on a person. At least okay? her That's pan is cool. clean. And the last yolk here, you can't forget about seasoning or ground beef, the black pepper on here, leaf chips. Oh my god, what? Surely my ears are deceiving me. Are you planning on making mashed potatoes out of potato chips? Oh wait, she's gonna use metal on her on her nonstick pan too, I bet. I mean we are a country with some standards, right? We're really gonna let this slide this, go. Uh, so? This stove top's way too clean for me. <laughs> this is yeah, I know. Another good question to ponder. What There's so much oil in potato chips. Now we're going to just place these butter slices all the way around the pan. We need some parsley, and we're just going to place it gently around our beef. Take the that. stems off if you're going to use parsley. Okay. It looks like they were never mashed potatoes. Only Pringles do that. Are you guys seeing this face? Yeah. Please do something about it. Do this only for Halloween. Just get them even thicker and creamier. We're going to add some of this dry blend cheese. Are you seeing this? They're overcooked. I'm nerfed by this video. I, I really don't like this meat face, guys. Am I alone in this? Am no. I the only one finding this slightly terrifying? That meat man is not right. Now, let's take a look. If this is ready to be flipped, You need a bigger spatula, but I'm proud you're not using a metal one. Alright, we're going for it. He's 
actually look like mashed potatoes, and you can't tell me they don't. Actually, they don't. You know what? I, I'm going to tell you they don't. So that was spoken like a person who has never seen a mashed potato in their life. It looks like a big pile of gross cheese. cheese. Caramelized onions and mashed potatoes? No. We're just going to guide our little face right out of the pan. I'm so excited to try this. How good does this look? Let's see how good this turned out. Oh yeah. Now that is a burger. Um, excuse me? So what? first you make a meat man, and then you make mashed potatoes out of potato chips, and you come around and tell me that this is supposed to be a burger. Um, what burger is served with mashed potatoes, first off, and what burger doesn't have a bun? Just when I thought this video couldn't get any more wrong, I made some turkey meatballs today. Are those burgers too? Is the only requirement in your mind meat? Come on, Jane, you're better than this. Start by placing our partially Chicken Partially our cooked! Our We're going to cut the edges off of four or five slices of bread. Now we're going to use the rolling pin to flatten out our slices of bread. And just going to make them... Please tell me this is a joke account. We're going to make it bread on just like this. Why does this remind me of like paper mache? Crafts, but make it different. Mache. You know, it actually makes me sad that a chicken had a bag of this. Now I'm not against eating meat or anything. Like I said, I had some turkey meat <coughs> today, which were pretty fantastic if I do that Pardon myself. Me? But like, these are living things. You're toying with a carcass for TikTok views. This is a real thing that had to die and go on a shelf for you to dip it in peanut butter and throw it away after making a stupid TikTok. Come on. One last piece on here like that. Now it's time to make our coating. We're going to take some of these maple cookies. And we're just going to mash these up. We're going to take two handfuls of cinnamon toast. Why? Are you trying to make like a chicken and waffles uh, thing peanut butter style? What in the hell is this? Oh, uh, yeah, because there was definitely not enough binding agent between the 17 maple cookies and the four cups of cinnamon toast crunch. Those breadcrumbs are crucial. We're going to mix that all together. We're going to take four eggs. And Can't even crack an egg. egg wash for a chicken. We're going to throw in some cinnamon right into our egg wash. Going into our cookie cereal crumble. Gross. Okay. Why is this kind of turning into something? Why are you lying? This is not turning into something. This is half cooked chicken with strips of white bread on it covered in pure sugar. Please explain what this is turning into. I'm all ears. <laughs> An abomination. You. She's summoning something. Because we need it so much healthy. We're going to pop them back in the air fryer for 10 minutes and let them cook. It's a ninja. Wow. Perfectly golden brown. We're going to dip our chicken in our sauce. Um, back up. No explanation on what the sauce is. Because it's like a raspberry that sauce. Doesn't look right. If anything, it actually looks quite wrong. Why are you dipping your white bread cinnamon chicken in what appears to be a strawberry smoothie? You know what? Actually, why am I even questioning it? <laughs> it makes perfect sense. No crunch. Mm, oh my gosh. Is that good? Did you actually take a bite? Let us see. Favor, look into those eyes and tell me with a straight face that those are the eyes of somebody who enjoys what they're eating. Yeah, that's what I thought. Start with our eggs. I noticed they didn't turn the damn chicken around to show us the bite. Freshly chopped onions, salt into the water, and then a little into the bag. Some milk, hot and spicy here. It'll go perfectly with the cool ranch. Cheese slices. And you want to mix it all together. We've seen this one before, you know but I'm gonna have to disagree with that. This is like a, a take on a Frito pie. The quickest way to get cancer. In my entire life, I have never had the thought even cross my mind. You know what? These I'm bags are not BPA free. Cooking techniques, and instead, I'm gonna boil everything I eat in a Doritos bag. I mean, what are the kids saying these days? Microplastics. This has got to be a speed run for fun in those guys, right? The water is boiling. We're just gonna bring this up and down. This is the technique to make it cook really. Fast. It's been about 20 minutes. She's teabagging it. it. It just feels done. It's so heavy. Ready? Oh, yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's heavy. It's a lot of beef in there. There we go. Then what's the ooh for? At least have some basic respect for your audience. First off, I know you did not sit there for 20 minutes bobbing a bag up and down in boiling water. 
This is clearly something you cooked off camera, but I mean good for you because I would start to be really concerned if you ate out of a boiled Dorito bag for Big Con. You know those really stupid signs and warnings you see on things and wonder why would anybody ever need to be told that? In a few years on Dorito bags, it's gonna say please do not use as a cooking vessel. Let's see if there are any warnings on a uh, bag. I have this one. The, they brought back the Sweet Calor Carolina Reaper uh, Cheetos. I would just want to see if there's any like warnings on here. Contains milk ingredients. Guaranteed fresh. Call this 800 number otherwise. I got it for sure. No warnings, not yet. <laughs> Just an allergen. Wow. Why is that so good? <laughs> it's because you're lying. Well, guys, another day, another TikTok food. All right, poster. that I mean, is really it for new. me. Thank you, August the Duck. Videos. It's not that they're making these stupid recipes, it's that they're making them just to waste it. It's like, just in these three TikToks alone, there was a considerable amount of food, most of which came from animals. I mean, seriously, maybe I was just raised differently, but that's a pretty weird disconnect for me. If something died for me to eat... Yep, yep, yep. All right, let me get back over to my abuse. Now you get to see me in person with most of my lipstick worn off. Uh, so yes, thank you so much for being here with me today. And uh, I'll see you guys. You have to keep this one in mind for my next stream. <laughs>